So yesterday was a pretty big vlog. I said a lot. I kind of opened the door to my personal life in a way that I had delayed doing for quite some time now. Um, I sent the vlog specifically to about 30 or so people that have been closest to me and probably um, a fraction of them have actually responded but the ones that have have been very insightful and in the things they shared back with me I didn't do it for a reaction I couldn't have done it for a reaction because that's just not how I think I write these I speak these into existence because it's what I need to say in the moment I I can't sleep I, I can't function completely until I get that thing out of my head. That's how I do these. The reactions and building an audience and all the things that people are doing these things for, um, I guess that's a reward in itself, but I don't look over my shoulder very long after I do these to know really who heard, who paid attention. Um, when someone writes me specifically, it moves me. I am honored that I've gotten the recognition, but I can't let it cloud how I do what I do when I do it. I have to keep doing it the way I do it. One day, I'm sure all of this will make sense. I will look back on what I was building all this time, but I I'm too close to the puzzle piece <clears throat> to see what it is right now. I, I'm concentrating on where this next one goes. That's it. One day I'll be able to pull back and maybe see. To that end, I overheard uh, myself as I was speaking yesterday say something that I wish I could have gotten out and said just uh, one more thing. Uh, when I talked about one day they're going to look at my epitaph and the only thing it's going to say is he lived exclamation point but I wanted to also add in that moment and I couldn't get to it um, he lived and he loved he loved you know if, if there's a word that describes me more than my lust for life it is that I love love I love to love others it is what makes me happiest when I see that moment in their eyes that they can truly relax in my presence and know that they're in good hands. There's nothing better. I don't do enough of that, I think, quite honestly. At least not one-on-one. -on -one. I've been a little bit of a recluse of late. Mainly because of work. You know, when you work a lot of hours, you have very few hours to yourself. And you get a little selfish with your time when you're off from work. So I certainly could do that more. I could visit more or let people visit me more. And I am going to work on that. But I love the fact that I have great memories of people loving me back and letting me love them. They've gone on, they've gotten married, they you know, have lives and families now. But for a moment in time, we got to have a lot of fun. And I miss that, I do. He loved. I want you to examine your love I want you to more so examine your intentions behind your love. We love for different reasons. Most of them are selfish. But every now and then we do something that's altruistic and it changes how we move in life when we experience that love at that level. If you've never experienced love that is selfless, that just is the thing you knew you were supposed to do, and you didn't care about the results, you know once you have that experience, 
you want it again and again. You know, people who give up their resources um, and they have limited resources. I remember people growing up uh, who would cook and feed the neighborhood. And I look over my shoulder now and I remember that and I think, how did they do that? They gave pretty much everything they had on a regular basis. That's giving over 50% of your income on a regular basis if you break it down to numbers. There are not many millionaires who do that. Seemingly only the people with fewer resources give more than they actually make. Why is that? There comes a point where you have to ask yourself, how much do I really need to have a great life? How much do I really need to have a comfortable life? And am I just hoarding more and more and more because of some fear that I'm going to be broke one day? If I've got an extra 2000 in savings and I know this person has a need and I can do something to help that need and I don't do it, Has something in me shifted? And then think of the opposite of that. I know I've got two grand. I give 300 away. I don't think about it. I keep moving it because I have the 1700 left. And when I'm not even aware of how it happened, all of a sudden I have 2000 again. I think money flows. It's called currency for a reason. And when we don't put it out there to come back to us at some future date in a different form or fashion, probably from a different source than the one we gave to, we have not made ourselves available. We have not said to the universe, I'm a receptacle that you can continuously deposit into because I keep it moving. What we are saying is I'm a receptacle that if you give me something, I'm going to hold on to it and never let it go. And I would venture to say it might be all you ever get from that mystical, magical place where things come that we don't expect them to come from. I think you have to activate that well. You have to activate that well to draw from it later. Love what you do. Do what you love. Try not to do it from a self-conscious place. Do it from a selfless place that doesn't give thought to what it looks like or how it feels. And watch the magic happen. That's your challenge for this week. Love better. Love deeper. Love stronger love more emphatically, love with intention. Okay? Good morning.